DS4 Windows is pretty much the best way to connect your PS5 controller to your PC and enjoy all the games in the world at your disposal. Through DS4 Windows, you'll be able to play games on Bethesda, Steam, Origin, Epic Games, and much, much more. Now, the download and setup for DS4 Windows is a little more daunting than the Steam one that we did just a couple weeks ago, but it's still very doable, and that's why me and Man Chagavelli is here to get you to and through it. Just remember that if you enjoyed the video, if it helped you at all, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Let's get right into this. Okay, so first thing you're going to do, you're going to come to this website right here. This is where you're going to download DS4 Windows. Okay, now this website is a little little different you don't really type in ds4windows.com it's really a github repository so i'll leave the link in the description but if you don't want to use the link in the description literally all you have to do is type in ds4 windows let that go and then your first link will bring you right to where i am so now that you're here you're going to click download now now there are multiple versions there's 3.0.18 3.0.17 and so on and so forth as of the recording, the latest version is 3.0.18. That's the version I'm going to be using. Maybe you might want to use a different version or I, it really is up to you. Um, as far as versions go, the DS4 Windows versions are usually very stable. So it only makes sense to really go with the latest one. But if for whatever reason you were having problems, maybe try 3.17 or 16 or something like that. But for right now, we're going to go to 3.0.18 x64.zip now that you've clicked that it'll download once it's downloaded you're going to click on forget the winrar thing you're going to click on ds4 windows right click that and it's going to ask you they're going to give you options you're going to click extract to a specified folder now it's going to default to downloads right the downloads folder in your pc tree that's where I normally would like to keep it. But just to show you how easy it is for you if you wanted to put it somewhere else, let's just click desktop. So that whenever you want to maybe get right into the DS4 Windows application, you can just go to the desktop instead of having to go to downloads, then DS4 Windows. So I'm clicking desktop right here. Click OK. Boom. So now where the file is going to be is right here on our desktop right here. You see DS4 Windows. I have a lot of things here. Don't mind me. But now here we are at DS4 Windows. Now, at this point, you're going to get, some of us are going to get a certain notification and others may not, but I'm going to walk through, walk you through that as well. So DS4 Windows, you're going to double click it and try to run, but it's going to say to run this application, you must install .NET. All right. That's just an application that's going to help DS4 Windows do what needs to be done. Because if you don't know what DS4 Windows does that's so special is that it turns the ps5 controller into an xbox controller it tricks your computer into thinking it's an xbox controller which is why you're able to now use playstation controllers with the pc not because pc knows it's an, a playstation controller but because pc thinks it's an xbox controller and in order to do that you need net software so you're going to click yes and it's going to take you right over here now really don't mind these i'm not too sure what these do you're just going to follow me here if you want to experiment one day by all means but you're just going to follow me right over here to .net in the corner and you're going to click to down you're going to go click download now at again at the time of this recording there is a brand new version of .net called .net 6.0 i have already tried this one it didn't work for me kind of gave me a bit of a hard time i wasn't even able to open up the ds4 windows application after its download so we're going to ignore dot 6.0 for a little bit and we're just going to go to use the regular one that people have been using for about over a year now which is dot net 5.0 so to get there you're going to click all dot net versions you're going to see dot net 5.0 right here Ooh. click on that and there's 5.0.12 you know, all ranging all the way down to 5.0.0. Now, again, I am going to be using the latest version of that. I will be running the 5.0.12 version, um, Windows X64. But if for whatever reason that still was not the one for you, you can just scroll down and use the basic one that a lot of people use when in hard times like these, and they just use the 5.0 version X64. But thankfully, I will be using the... 0.0.12 so click x64 it will naturally download then when it's done 
you're going to run install, you're going to install it. Okay, so I already have this installed, so that's why I'm getting this pop-up, which is really only allowing me to either repair the program or uninstall it. But you guys will be getting a pop-up that says install, and I can't stress this enough, the process is so easy. All you have to do is click install, the next and next. It's so simple, so easy. You guys can do it on your own, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to run through it right now. I'm just going to move forward. And then once you're finished installing, we can go back over to our file tree, DS4 Windows. Remember, I had it on the desktop. Maybe you have it in your downloads folder, whatever. But find the DS4 Windows folder, then navigate into it and you're going to see DS4 Windows, this little colorful icon. At this point, your app should be running smoothly. So we're gonna double click it, and boom, here we are. Now for whatever reason, this didn't happen to me during the recording, but usually, if you first start this up, and if you guys are one of these people, you'll be asked program folder or app data. Just understand that Either choice is just fine, but program folder would allow you to move the file from place to place. You can put it on a USB drive, uh, an external hard drive, and you know upload it to different computers if you wanted to. Um, or you could do app data, which kind of locks the application to the users on the PC that you've now downloaded the program to. Either one is just fine. I chose app data because I know I'm not going anywhere, but you could choose program folder. Either way, you will be just fine moving forward in these steps. We are now open in the DS4 windows. If you have made it this far, you are cooking with grease, my friend. Round of applause. So now that we're here, we are going to connect our controllers to the PC. Now, if you've watched my last tutorial, you'll, you already know how to do this, but for those who are just now coming, it's really simple. You are going to just hold the share button and the PlayStation button. I'm going to turn off the lights real quick so that you can see what happens when you do that. So you're going to hold it and you're going to hold it until it starts blinking. At this point, I, it's blinking. You see it? Now that it's blinking, you're going to go and navigate to Bluetooth. I have like a nice little shortcut here, show Bluetooth devices. But if you don't know how to get there, you can literally just type in Bluetooth on your start menu and click that, you'll end up in the same place. Then when you get here, just click add Bluetooth or other device. Then you're gonna click Bluetooth again. Now I do have two PlayStation controllers, so this is just a, this is just a personal problem of mine. Sometimes I don't know which controller I have to click on, but I think it's gonna be this one. You see it just, all right, there you go. The other one disappeared for whatever reason. So now that I'm connected, you'll see that it's going, it's automatically connected. Now I can X everything out. And DS4 Windows is recognizing my controller. You've seen DS4 Windows is using profile default. Battery is, is, is 0%. Now, this is where we start to learn about the software in and of itself. So right now you see my controller is here, but there are different profiles for your controller. And profiles just mean Right now we're in the default profile, but profiles are just specific settings that you can automatically set your controller to without having to constantly reset, reset controllers and everything. So I'm going to explain that really quickly. So right now we're in the default setting, okay? But right now, just, just walk with me, you'll understand this when it's done. Click the drop down menu here uh, next to edit and you're going to click new profile, okay? Then you're going to say, it's going to ask you, do you want a preset option? Just click yes, and I'm going to explain why. When you have the preset option, DS4 Windows is going to naturally map your controller to whatever controller you want it to be, which is going to be an Xbox 360 one or a DualShock 4 one, basically a PS4 or PS5 one. And you're going to click DualShock 4 so that automatically 95% of this controller is already mapped out for you. If you didn't do that and you decided to start from a clean slate, you would have to manually map triangle to triangle, circle to circle, X to X. It would have been a little bit of time, might have been a little tedious. It may have been a waste of time for most people. I know for me it would have been because again, DS4 Windows does it pretty much all on its own. But there is one issue that you're going to have to do on your own and I'm going to show you now. So naturally, the PlayStation 5 controller, once you connect it to DS4 Windows, the touchpad becomes a mouse. Okay? So what's nice is that if you click it, 
You see? Now you're, cl oh, let me turn on the light really quickly so that you can see me. Hmm. So when you click it, you can click things and everything. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nifty. You see, I can even minimize a window. Watch this. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, come on. See? Oh, oh. Ah, there it is. See, I can minimize the window, so it's pretty cool. You can use the um, the touchpad and everything. But if you're playing a game like COD, you need this to open the map. But instead, you'll end up clicking things, so you don't want that. So what we're going to do here, you see, when you hover over this, if you hover over any of these buttons, this drop down right here is going to automatically scroll to those buttons and the corresponding figures. So what we're going to do to map this out, you're just going to click the touchpad, all right? Click it and set it like that. So what I just did, I set the, where is it? I set the upper touch to touchpad click. We're going to do the same thing for multi-touch, right touch, and left touch. Because as you can see right now, left touch is left mouse button, right touch is right mouse, uh, right touch is right is left mouse button, and multi-touch is right mouse button. And I don't really remember what the upper touch was, but either way, we're just going to make them all touch click. Left mouse click, boom. We just made them all touchpad click, which means that now whenever you go into your games like Apex, like Warzone, and so on, you'll be able to open up the map using your PS4 controller. So that's just one thing that you're going to have to do on your own, but it doesn't. there's nothing else to it, really. Um, at this point, you should click Save. Oh, well, if you click Save right now, it'll tell you to name it, name these settings. And so we're just going to type in PS5 controller settings. Uh, I'll just pipe PS5. So now we're going to click save. So now we're in save. And you'll notice that you have two profiles now. When you click this drop down, there's going to be default. And there's going to be PS5 controller. Okay? You can also see these profiles right here if you click the profiles tab. Default and PS5 controller. And so this is what I was talking about when I said that there are profiles. So now if you have your settings in default, your touchpad is going to work just like a mouse. But now if you decide to change it, to PS5 controller, you'll lose that functionality. No more clicking. And that's the whole purpose of having different profiles. It allows you to seamlessly switch between one group of settings to another on the PlayStation 5 controller. Now there are more settings that we're going to get into right here right now. So let's add another profile. Again, you could click yes. We're going to make it a DualShock 4. Nice. So we're just going to name this one PS5 Colors. And I'm going to explain what this setting is all about. So another nifty feature here is this thing called light bar. And with light bar, you have your RGB here. So again, I'm going to turn off the light so that you can see what I'm about to show to you guys. You can control the light settings on your PlayStation 5 through this setting. So you see now there's no light. But there was blue now. You can also take green. Now it's like a light blue. Take red. Now it's like a white. You see how it changes? with everything. Then you have like a nice another nice feature right here called color by battery percentage. So, if you click that, so let's say whenever your controller is dead or at 0% battery, you want it to know through the colors on the PlayStation 5 controller. You could just sit here and let's use common sense here. Red is usually bad, so We'll make it red, and now, boom, you'll see that my controller is at red. Again, because DS4 Windows does think that my controller is at 0%. You can have it at red if you want, or for whatever reason you wanted it at green, then by all means. Or you could have, since it's full, leave it on green, but of course it won't be green for me right now. And then when it's empty, leave it on red. So now you'll know, well, my controller is on good percentage when it has a green light. And it's on a bad percentage when it has a red light. So that's kind of nice. Then whenever your controller might reach a certain percentage level, like let's say 50 or something or 20, you can have the same color system over here. Make it a certain color, whatever you would like. Right now, they, it defaulted to what I had here, which was already green. So you see now it's at green. So you see it flashes when it's under 20% at green. And, right, and when it gets to zero, it'll be red. We're just going to set everything back to blue, though. Because I do like that blue. And then you could just take off color by battery percentage if you want. Done and done. 
And there's a fun little setting for when you have your controller wired up. If you didn't know, if you have your controller wired up to the PC, it will automatically charge your controller. And when that happens, when you're not using it, it right now, it's just going to be a regular color, which is blue. But if I changed it to like something like Pulse, well, Pulse will be a little harder to see. Let's change it to Rainbow. You'll see that now it's changing colors. And that's how you know that your controller is charging. But if I were to take it out, it'll just be regular blue again. So that's something nice for you to see as well. See, now it's back to rainbow. Then there's some touchpad settings for the mouse. You can, you know, uh, make the slide a little faster or a little slower. You can do a lot of different things with these, though I'm not gonna get too much into them because these settings are basically just about optimizing the touchpad slash trackpad on the PS5 controller to mimic all the things that a regular mouse could do. And I generally wouldn't recommend you to dive too deeply into this, unless of course you don't have an actual mouse, which I can't imagine you have a PC and then not a mouse. But you know, if you have a regular mouse, there's no, there's generally no reason for why you would want to use the trackpad over an actual mouse. So I'm not going to dive deep into this at all. And if you come over with me to other, this tab over here, we're going to increase your controller's response time when you know inputting commands to the PC for your video games like Call of Duty and whatnot so that you can have the fastest input response time possible. You know, in competitive games like Call of Duty or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to be able to, you're gonna want your controller and your PC to react to your shooting and your movement as quick as possible so that in game you're moving even faster than your competitors so what we're going to do here we're going to switch this from four milliseconds to max or 1000 hertz milliseconds and this is really this setting is really more for bluetooth users but if you're wired up you should also use it anyway but generally speaking you know if you're wired up you're probably going to be at the fastest connection possible by default, but still set it to one milliseconds anyway. It will make it a little faster. But if you're doing Bluetooth, you definitely have to set it to one millisecond because wireless can there. There's usually a little bit of a delay. And so now that that's all good and well, we could now that we have PS5 colors, you could save it as another profile. So now if you so now you have default PS5 controller and PS5 colors, and you would really choose whichever one you want. It's very simple. Here's one more setting for DS4 Windows, just for you to enjoy. See, if you come over here to the Settings tab, you'll have this option called Run at Startup. Mine is already checked off, but you can check yours on or off. It doesn't matter, but if you leave it checked, it just means that DS4 Windows will start running in the background as soon as you turn on your PC, which is pretty nice for those who know they're gonna be gaming on their PC a lot. That way, you don't have to open up the app, then get everything reconnected. You can just leave this, you could just turn on your PC, DS4 Windows is on, then all you have to do is turn on your PlayStation controller, it'll automatically connect and you'll be good to go. That's really about it. And if you want to see what it would be like if I had two controllers here, I'll show you really quickly. Okay, so right now I'm about to add my wired controller. Boom bap. And you'll see DS4 is going to recognize it automatically. You see now there's two PlayStation 5 controllers here. And you'll see the difference. One says Bluetooth, one says... This one says wireless, but uh, it's really wired. I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like. And you see my battery percentage on this one is 25% plus. And then now you can start setting them as different things. So look, so now I have this controller that if I used it, I can't click anything because remember we had it with, a, with the other settings so that this was for the game. But now I have this controller, which I have as default, which can now click. You see? So isn't this nice? So now we have wired and wireless controllers. You get to see them both and how it would look at with them both right here. And now, one last tip. If you wanted to stop this program without closing it, all you have to do is click stop. Now it's done. Neither of my controllers can work anymore. You see? Won't work. Nothing will work. Now if you want to start it back up, you just click start and everything is back to normal. And if you wanted to close the entire app just all together, you just exit out. They're gonna show you this prompt, don't be scared, just say yes. And then if you wanna start it back up, you head back over to DS4 Windows, and everything will automatically reconnect. So DS4 Windows is pretty cool, but alas, what would a tutorial be if I didn't show you the finished product? So let's head over to Call of Duty and see how all this works.
So as you can see, it is working. I'm leaving my selected input device as controller. So you see, I can move around, open the map. You see, it's really that simple. Everything is good. But if I were to change my profile, hold on, if I were to change, if I were to change my profile to default, and you see, now that I've switched it to default, which really just means Xbox 360 controller, all my buttons are going to be a little different now. Watch. You see, now it's telling me to open the TAC map with the with a place with the Xbox button I can't well I can but it would now be this that would be the new map instead of the the touchpad so and now they're gonna say A to jump but as you know this is a PlayStation so it's really X so th those are the differences if you go over to Apex Legends you'll find that you can't even play this game unless it has the Xbox 360 or default option pretty much so you'll see right now. Remember, I'm currently in D let's go to DS4 Windows. I'm currently using the default Xbox 360 option. You could even I I had two. Just default basically. And so now I'll be able to enter the game and do what I would like. You'll see. Very easy for me to use the game. But if I were to change it to the PS5 mapping. <laughs> excuse me. If I change it to the PS5 mapping, you'll see I'll lose all control. <coughs> Excuse me. I lose all control. So, remember, it does depend on the game. Some games will allow you to play with the PlayStation 5 map mapping on the controller. Other games, you'll need the Xbox mapping. But with Warzone, you can do the PlayStation mapping, and it'll be just fine. And one last thing to keep in mind... DS4 Windows can clash with Steam a little if you have your controllers connected to both programs. If you plan on using Steam, try to disconnect your controllers from DS4 Windows. If you plan on using DS4 Windows, disconnect your controllers from Steam just so that things can run smoothly. I mean, some instances you might be fine depending on the game, but you really don't want to run into any issues. Um, generally speaking, just try to choose one when you know you're going to be using that program for those controllers. Just, just, just as a heads up. And if all this is a little too much for you and you'd much rather the plug and play options that are available on Steam, then you can go check out my other tutorial where I get in depth with that. But anyway, that's it for the tutorial. I know it was a very long one, but I just wanted to get really in depth for you guys. I hope I was able to answer any questions that you guys may have. But if you have more, leave them in the comments below. Remember, did I say anything wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Is there anything else that I missed out on? Please let me know. It helps me get better at this. And I enjoy the engagement. So, without further ado, it's Chuck Avelli signing off. I appreciate you coming by. Peace, man.